This may be a little bit weird for me to say since I have so many videos based around React. And I'm gonna preface this by going ahead and saying, if you're gonna learn any type of JavaScript library framework, whatever it may be in 2023, then I would certainly recommend going with React. But if you are new to coding, new to programming, web development, or the tech industry in general, then I would not make it my primary goal to master React before applying and, and trying to get your first entry level web developer position. And I'm mostly speaking to the people who do not have a fancy four year computer science degree or who did not attend a coding bootcamp, but really this pertains to anyone. But without a piece of paper to back up your knowledge or your skill set, you're going to have a difficult time making it past the recruiters and the technical interviews, or really just the recruiters to actually get to a technical interview and ultimately receive an offer. Certainly there's gonna be some prodigies out there who have a natural ability to learn and retain information. But this is honestly not gonna be the normal for most people and it's certainly not the normal for myself. And I'm not trying to throw shade to anyone who was able to self-study and get a job offer after just a few short months of you know working their butt off and studying and doing coding challenges and building little web apps. That's just not the normal for most people. It's gonna be really, really tough for you to get a job in, in a few short months. It just likely won't happen for you and, and it definitely didn't happen to me. And if you have started applying for jobs and then you, you know how discouraging it can feel. You might have applied to 20, 30 jobs, even a day, maybe 100 jobs and you don't even get a response. They don't even tell you no, they just completely ghost you. And maybe four or five out of the 50 places you applied to actually will respond to you, but they're they're just telling you no, you, you don't have enough experience. We don't, you know, you don't have enough work history. We're looking for someone with a higher skill level or the role's already been filled. It's really discouraging, but the truth is, Working for a business as a developer, it's a huge risk on the company to actually hire someone. It can be very costly to hire someone and they really wanna make sure you're a good fit for the role and you can actually do what you say you can do and you're gonna be a good fit to the team before they actually extend an offer. And interviews are not just about technical experience and solving coding challenges. If you're like a rock star at writing code, but you're really abrasive and you can't really convey your thoughts to people, or maybe you, you come off a little rough and you, they don't really feel like you can communicate, that's gonna be a huge red flag. And employers are just looking for reasons not to hire you. Like if you're in an interview, they have so, most places have so many applicants, they're literally looking for reasons to reject people. And how well they would perceive you to fit into the team, regardless of your skill set. Like I said, even if you're a badass at writing code, if they don't think you're gonna be a good fit for the team and work well with, with the others, then you're just not gonna receive an offer. But they really wanna make sure that you're a good fit. This is why you might go through four or five interviews with the same company before actually receiving an offer. But to get to the point here, if a company has built their application off React, for example, they're likely not gonna hire someone who submits a portfolio and maybe they've built like a weather app, they've built a chat application, maybe a Netflix clone. And a real quick side tip here, you guys, build, have some really cool, unique projects and build something that's unique to your own interests because you're the only you out there. And if you're just submitting a, a weather app or a Twitter clone, whatever, chances are guys, they've seen 50 of these, 100 of these that day. I mean, that's you're not gonna stand out that way. So build something that's unique to your own interests and preferably not something that you copied, copied off YouTube. And it, it's great to copy stuff off YouTube, you know, for, for learning purposes and to get a better understanding of the code, but put your own spin on it. And like, once you learn all these these tools and these concepts from from videos and, and youtubers kind of make put your own spin on it and create a project of your own so just put your own spin on it and make it yours but why learning react first might be a mistake well i don't think it's actually a mistake but i do highly doubt you're going to find a job as a brand new developer as a react developer if you have zero experience you don't have a you know, you didn't learn React in, in a coding bootcamp, you, you don't have a computer science degree, the chances of you getting hired to write React code, they're just very slim. Once you have work experience, th that's a different story, but with no experience, it's gonna be tough. And there's a big difference between building to-do list apps or whatever tutorial that you follow on YouTube and an enterprise level application with literally thousands and thousands of files. Their app documentation may be literally hundreds of pages on, on Confluence, and that's, that's a lot different than a little bio in, in GitHub explaining how the weather app works. It's it's the complete opposite of being handheld in a YouTube tutorial. And don't get me wrong, tutorials are really great. I still watch them myself to this day if I'm trying to pick up 
a new technology that I'm trying to learn, but it's they're really great to understand the basics, not to actually build all these YouTube tutorials and, and put them on your resume, but just use them for what they are, the building blocks of React, of Angular, of Vue, if you're learning Python, Django, whatever it is, just learn the concepts and then build something of your own. So when people ask me, is this good enough to get a job or is this good enough to put on my portfolio website? Yeah, sure, but I would like to take a more targeted approach for your first job. Like I said, there's a sea of applicants out there. It's gonna be like, how are you gonna stand out? People are looking for niche skills and React just isn't really niche enough. I'd recommend learning some sort of CMS. This could be like a content management system. This could be something like Shopify, WordPress, uh, big commerce if you're in like the e-commerce space or like Salesforce or Braze in a marketing space. These you, these all have enterprise level uh, applications and they can get very complex and they'll need like, a technical person to, to navigate through and implement different strategies that they have. Or maybe learn some type of cloud computing like AWS or Microsoft. I think there's this Azure or Google Cloud Services, maybe some CCNA networking. All these are gonna support you as a developer and they're things that are kind of kept back of mind while writing code and, and creating apps. A good developer is gonna be thinking about usability and scalability. What's gonna happen after you know more than five people log on? What's gonna happen if 5,000 people log on? 500,000 people, 5 million people. Is my app gonna crash? Can it scale? What's gonna happen when uh, I'm not the only developer working on this and now there's 20 developers working on this. How is it, how is it, how are we all gonna collaborate? And that might not be your dream job as a, as a developer or programmer, but once you have a year or two of work experience underneath your belt and you're gaining experience, this is gonna give you credibility in the, in, in the workspace and in the tech industry. And even though you aren't programming web apps like you thought you were and like you see all these YouTubers talking about doing like, this, this is still, you're still gonna be exposed to writing some type of code and solving tech problems and gaining other necessary skills working on a team of developers. I hear a lot of people talking about landing their first job at 100K a year, 120K a year, 160K a year, 200K a year, and you know, which is awesome. That's really awesome if you're able to do that. And I know some were, but that's just certainly not me. Um, it's not the normal for the everyday person either. I can promise you that. It's just very, it's highly unlikely with for a junior developer with zero experience. And you guys, technical experience will go so much further than any type of coding project that you put on your resume. Or for, for me personally, if I was conducting an interview, which I have before, if I have one person that has, we'll say person A has zero work experience, okay, but their portfolio may have like a React to-do list, a, a Netflix clone, maybe a weather app, you know, like just some some stuff that you'd see on, on YouTube, for example, and then you have person B, and person B has one to two years experience of writing just plain HTML and CSS. Maybe they, they wrote, like built like some email templates, something super simple, minimal exposure to JavaScript, PHP, any programming languages, and not much React experience. I would probably give my vote to, to person B every time. Why? Because I know that they have likely worked with a team of, of people. I know that they will pick up the necessary skills to complete the task and they'll likely be a self-starter and a self-learner. And that to me is so much more valuable than, than someone who's not. And they're not gonna require as much handholding throughout this process. And time is very limited in the workspace. You only have what, like the times from nine to five and half that time's probably gonna be taken up with meetings. So you really don't have tons of time. The, the day goes by so fast. There's not tons of time for handholding. But at least the person with one to two years of HTML and CSS experience, of actual work experience, has a proven track record of, of working with a team, in my experience, or, or in my opinion at least. And guys, anyone in the tech industry will tell you that once you have your first job and you have that proven record, it's gonna be so much easier to find your next job in tech. It's just breaking down that barrier to entry, breaking down that initial gate and getting past the trolls at the, at the gate. In fact, for myself and for a lot of people I know, you guys, I didn't even apply for the role that I'm currently in. And same with the last one as well. It's kind of weird, but you, like, you apply to 30, 40, 50 jobs just to get your first job and sometimes more for that matter, but you apply to all these places just trying to get your foot in the door and you're gonna accept the first offer that, that comes your way. And that's just how it is to get your first job in tech. But once you have that first job, this gains you credibility. And that's that's what you need for, for companies to take a chance on you. You need, you need credibility. And once you have that first job and employers see and recruiters see that you actually are currently working in tech, it's crazy. You're gonna actually just start receiving offers from other places without, without even applying. 
maybe not like sign offer letters, but you're going to have p companies reaching out to you. Hey, come apply with us. Come interview with us. We'd like to have you in our company. So try not to overcomplicate things and think that you have to master React uh, coding challenges, master pro programming concepts, just to get your, your foot in the door and get your first entry level job. Because once you have this job, you're going to be gaining experience. You're going to be getting a paycheck for this. And like I said, once you have your first job in IT, it's going to be a lot easier to get your next job, which, which can easily be, you know, a 2x increase in, in pay.